Thank you everyone for coming. Um, thank you to my panellists as well. Today I'm joined by Eric Hunter from MMF, Lou Whiting from Wild Management and Simon Parton from Blocks. A uh, bit about me, I'm Alexandra Jones. I work in the Welsh music industry in a few different ways. I work with Beacons uh, Cymru, which is all about building musical infrastructure in Wales, a bit for Forte Project, which is artist development. Um, in a managing capacity, I manage Dactyl Terra, um, psych rock band based in the valleys. Um, and then, yeah, I also do just random freelancey bits in Welsh music. And I'm really interested in management and trying to build a management force in Wales and just trying to improve the general overall infrastructure in Wales. I just want to go around to my lovely panellists for a sec. Uh, I wanted just to say hello, uh, who you are, a bit about how you got into management. So, Eric, could I start with you, please? Yes, thanks, Alex. Um, so, hi, everyone. My name is Eric Hunter. I'm the Education and Membership Engagement Manager at the MMF, or the Music Managers Forum. And for those who aren't aware of what the MMF is, we're actually a trade body that represents um, music managers. So we've currently got over 1300 members in the UK. And um, yeah, we do lots of things like advocacy. So, you know, we advocate for in parliament for better rights for music managers. Um, we also host lots of training and events and educational things, and also just provide a kind of community for music managers um, within the UK. That's amazing. Um, I bet a lot of people from Wales maybe haven't uh, heard of this resource or use this resource. Do you have many um, people in the community from Wales? Um, we do. We do have quite um, a lot of members in Wales, but we're actually planning on kind of expanding that. So we've recently been awarded some funding and next year we're planning to do a lot more work in Wales as well and probably with yourself um Alex and Rianne so um just just watch this space but I mean if you guys wanted any more information on the MMF um please check our website um www.themmf.net and I'll also leave my email address as well just in case anyone has any questions and um yeah just in terms of membership um, we kind of price it as the price of a drink every month. So if you're over 30, it works out around £10 per month and under 30, it's £5 per month for MMF membership. Amazing. That sounds pretty accessible as well. Thank you, Eric. Lou, could I jump on to you? I'm going in the order on my screen. Hi, nice to meet you all. Um, I'm Lou Whiting. I've worked in the music industry now for over 25 years. You have to excuse me, my voice is going, I've been talking all day. <laughs> um, so yeah, I started off working as a music producer about 30 years ago, um, producing music videos for The Cure and Dinah Krull and Usher. And um, I moved over to 19 Management to found a couple of their development programmes, one of which was Pop Idols and Pop Stars. <laughs> And I stayed there and sort of developed and worked in management, really, from there onwards. And I worked, moved across to Modest, looking after Niall and One Direction. And then I worked over at IE Management for quite a few years as well. They look after Robbie Williams and Will Young. And then I decided to set my own company up about 10 years ago, which is Wild Management. And we look after developing artists as well as international established artists. And we also have a live arm. So we tour direct, production manage um, artists such as Pink, Share, and ACDC. Wow, that's quite a collection of artists you've worked for and with. Yeah, good fun, but lots of hard work. <laughs> based now in Wales, aren't you? Yeah, so Wild Management is based in Cardiff. We do have an office in London now, um, but yeah, HQ is here in Cardiff. Do you manage any Welsh acts at all? We do. We um, have three artists, actually. A band called Himalayas, so sort of a rock band. Um, a singer-songwriter, but more songwriter, uh, Caroline Harrison now. And uh, a new artist called Macy, who's pop. Oh, amazing. I know of Himalayas and Macy. I'll have to check out Caroline. Though. Yeah, Caroline's brilliant. She, she has been around for quite a long time, songwriting. Amazing. Thank you, Lou. Simon okay. Parton, what about you? Hello, uh, yeah, so for anyone that doesn't know me, my name is Simon Parton. Um, I've been working, I guess, as a freelancer within the Welsh music landscape for like four or five years now. Um, 
officially been doing management i guess for about a year unofficially maybe for two um and yeah as part of one of the many things that i do i co-founded blocks um which is basically a new music talent agency in wales um our roster at the moment is uh adwife chroma minus and kid smoke um and yeah it's uh it's a lot of fun and i've been doing a lot of learning as i go so it's quite nice i guess this panel because you've got lots of people on different rungs of the ladder so to speak so yeah glad to be here today thank you everyone so my first question is and i'll i'll um direct this to each of you so how does somebody get started in managing artists would you say there's a formula to it eric would you like to go first yeah of course um so i'd say in terms of management um lots of people kind of take different routes into management and no kind of two managers are the same um there, there isn't actually you don't actually need a license or any formal qualifications to be a manager and yeah no two managers are, are the same so you know everyone has their own unique style um they bring their own kind of skills to the table so you know some managers maybe someone who's great at finance um maybe someone who's great at social media it could be someone who's you know previously worked in the industry and wants to kind of use their knowledge to help someone or an act that they know or that they're kind of working with or it could just be someone who's um passionate about an act and really really wants to kind of help out um so yeah it, there's no kind of set route into management um you know even some people who've got skills like graphic design skills or you know someone who's just really organized um can utilize and those transferable skills into management um but one thing that i would say it's all about just kind of finding out what skills you have and how to develop them to help to benefit the artists that you're working with yeah that's that's really interesting the you mentioned graphic design i know was that the first thing that kind of got you in there as well simon was your graphic skills would you say that was kind of the way you sort of got into doing music bits I guess so yeah like um the graphic side of stuff was something that I was always like so I was in bands and stuff growing up and making music and releasing music and that was always the the, the job I'd get in the band was oh, I'll do all the gig posters and artwork and everything and that kind of then translated into my freelance work that I do or part of it and then yeah I guess I was working with a band and helping them with that and then conversations were you know I was very much within conversations on the planning of the strategy of the band um and it wasn't a case of me kind of being like yeah I'm, I'm going to be your manager it was more of a it makes a lot of sense if that just kind of naturally happens um so that was kind of my route in was that I had no intention of being a manager um I was just very much along for the ride um, and really enjoying the music that the guys were putting out. Um, and um, yeah, it, yeah, like I said, it just happened really organically. And I think that's probably the main thing that I say to, you know, I'm sure that everybody is a manager. I'm sure you get it, Lou and Alex. I'm sure you get it as well as people going, oh, will you be my manager? Um, and I'm always like, well, I either don't know your music or I don't know you. And I think that was the two key things for me doing it was like, right, okay, I know that I can work with you and I like you. And most importantly, I really like the music. I always view it as like being in, so I always think of like that Jack Black quote in School of Rock when he's like, just because you're not in the band doesn't mean you're not in the band. Um, and that's kind of the way I view it. It's like being part of the journey, but not doing all the horrible sweaty gigs all the time. <laughs> The the um the list that you just spoke about, Eric, about all the skills needed in a manager. Lou, do you think that um do you think that there's a formula? Like similarly to Eric, you know, he thought of all these different paths. Do you think there's a certain formula to becoming a band manager, or do you think that you know um it's kind of free, kind of more like Simon's approach? Um, th no, there isn't a set formula. But one thing I would say, but it's like in any job as is at management level is that you need to understand all the skills that it takes 
to kind of get your band or artist where they need to be. So if you have a bit of a background in promoting or events, graphic design, film, or if you come from the label aspect or an agency, you need to kind of understand what everyone does so that you can make sure that they do their job properly. I come from um, an accountancy and business sort of background, really, essentially, and producing. And for me, as much as I love the music of all the artists that I represent, it is a business at the end of the day, and you have to learn how to make money for them. And obviously, if you're making money for them, then you're making money for yourself and your company. So you need to kind of have that mindset as well, I think. Yeah, I think with them, with the money side of things especially because for example I know a few of my friends as well have done it um where they they love their um the music that their friends make and then you kind of fall into this management position as a friend of a band it was similar for me it's quite hard to forget the um quite easy to forget sorry the financial aspect of it it's probably because I don't come from a finance background um, I come from more of an events background so I'm constantly thinking on to the next gig on to the next event whereas maybe someone like yourself is more um, concerned with the finance, which is most probably the more, most sustainable way of looking at it. Um, yeah, I think it's about, you know, it's really easy, especially when you're looking after a new band and you're starting out to sort of get caught up and doing a lot of work for the artist and then not charging for your time or working out how they can put a value on your time. And if you don't set that as a standard, people just take advantage of you. And it's like anything, if you pay for something, you accept, expect a certain service. So you should, you know, it's, I think that's a really good formula to put in place. Even if your artist is earning no money, so you're making 0%, whatever uh, management commission you're charging, it's good to set that as a precedent. And a few of our developing artists who don't make any money at the moment, um, we always make a note that obviously this, we, we, we clock hours as well. It sounds quite mean and quite harsh, but then day is a business, so you do need to, to think about that because then you know you can dedicate the correct amount of hours to get them where they need to be for sure eric what sort of advice would you give to somebody starting out in management say they've you know they they're interested in their local scene or they're interested in music generally and there's an artist that they have in mind who they kind of know they trust so simon goes with people who they know and like and they also like the music so they're in that position um what advice would you give to someone who's just starting out? Um, really good question. Um, but I'd say similarly to um, like what Lou was saying, it's um, it's a business at the end of the day. So I'd firstly maybe start um, just thinking about ways that you can actually help them improve their career. So, you know, looking at your kind of strengths and seeing how you can use those to you know, benefit your your artists. Um, at the same time as well, depending on your background, um, it will just be kind of, you know, gaining experience and an overview of the kind, kind of industry or the kind of niche market that you're in. Um, so, you know, just finding ways to create opportunities for you to kind of grow with your act as well. And um, the way you need to kind of look at it as well is that you're building a business together. So, you know, your, your friend that you really love their music, how can you actually help them to create an income and build it from just a hobby thing into an actual into an actual business? Um, whether that's kind of, you know, gaining experience in just through taking online courses or, you know, we've got MF training or kind of, um, maybe even interning somewhere within the industry or within an area that you're not as versed in and kind of working your way up or just gaining contacts and um, partners and that that kind of thing within the, the music industry can also be really helpful. Definitely like this I kind of imagine it, it kind of like a cycle so if the band's doing well it comes back around to you you know it's kind of like that it's working yeah. for everyone. Would um what would you say for like someone who's trying to look for work experience opportunities? How are they? How should they best approach someone? Like, for example, um, Simon, if someone wanted to intern for Blocks, what would you be expecting them to kind of ask for and say? Simon, you're on mute, my friend. I'm on mute. Classic. Um, it's a, it's a funny one. I guess Blocks is an interesting one because it's um everybody that the kind of the kind of behind the scenes of blocks is um 
uh, you know, we're juggling lots. It's like one thing in, in you know, it's not my full time job, let's say. Um, but, I, you know, I'm more than happy and willing to, you know, let people get on board and have a taste of what it's like. And um, whether that would be, you know, if if somebody wanted to come on board and just like be in on meetings and understand kind of the inner workings of what's going on and planning. Um, but I think in terms of like, not on a blocks perspective, but more in terms of how to get experience, I think like a lot of the time, I think that there's bands who a, p- a potential manager knows that they would like to manage if they're friends or just a band that you've seen um, or vice versa. There's a band or an artist that's like, oh, they could maybe be my manager. And I think that there's a lot of people that don't know that they've got the capabilities to be a manager and vice versa. Bands don't know that there's actually people that could be their manager that they know or have met. Um, So I think that there's a big element of just kind of like closing your eyes and jumping and going for it. Um, But yeah, in terms of what I would expect, I mean, yeah, it's just that communication thing. I think from an early stage, it's like getting like Lou said and, you know, like Eric said, it's just kind of establishing and laying your cards on the table and letting, making sure that two-way conversation is clear from the off on this is what I expect from you and this is what you should expect from me. Um, and the, the the sooner and easier and quickly you do that, it's going to save yourself a lot of time down the line. <laughs> um, and being, you know, let's like say laying all those cards on the table just makes everybody's lives easier and for both manager and artist. Um but yeah, I don't know if that answers your question, but that was maybe my take on that, I suppose. <laughs> well, that was really nice. Thank you, Simon. Uh, Lou, would you say the same? Like what sort of, say, um, I don't know if Wild Management are taking on interns at the moment um, or MMF for that matter, but what would you, what sort of, say someone, I know I keep going back to someone just starting out, but they're looking now, they've got an interest in management, they, they have a band in mind, they want some more experience, how would what qualities would you be looking in for someone um, looking what qualities would someone need to have for you to you know approve and be like I'd love to have you on my team or whatever I think we do take interns oh you do that's um, good yeah we do um, but the, I, I suppose qualities for me is just a hard worker because I think if you're a hard working manager then you'll have high expectations for your band to be hard working so therefore all your artists and it's sort of, again, setting those standards that, you know, if they work hard and put as much effort in as you and you to divvy the work out, um, you'll get where you need to be. But yes, we do have interns. And it and again, it's similar to like Simon saying, you can come in and listen to meetings and understand how planning meetings work with labels, how they work with agents, how we're working with promoters, tour managers and production managers when they're going out and putting the whole a whole tour together, understanding everything from traveling abroad and putting visas together as well, and carnets. There's just so much to understand. I think if you can get that opportunity to intern, but even if it's not within a management company, so you could go and see if you could help out working on a local festival. And sort of, I would suggest working within production. So learn understanding the logistics of getting loading in, loading out, all the crew. I think that's really super important because obviously if you look after an artist, you want them to be amazing at live because obviously that's where you make your money as a manager. You can commission off any live merchandise. So there's so many elements, but um, it's just about getting your name out there, proving that you're hardworking and opportunities do come up then that way. That's really um, interesting. I know that you mentioned at the start, you've had like quite big names um, you've been involved in. What I'm looking at more at, um, what I'm more interested in really for Wales specifically is managing artists from a more grassroots level. So what do you think someone like me should be doing to make sure that my band or artist gets media coverage, good publicity, are in contact with the right people, get good opportunities? So what sort of strategies or approaches do you recommend for a more grassroots level? Because I know a lot of music in Wales kind of stems from there's a hell of a community really in Wales I'm sure you'd agree Simon of grassroots music that they're kind of on a a certain level and it's not quite you know um, national but in Wales they do really really well Um, so yeah what what would you say Lou and then I'll go around and ask everyone else as well 
um, for us, so we have a couple of grassroots artists and I mean, the main thing is get, getting them out there and actually building up a fan base because if you don't have a fan base, then obviously you're not going to sell streams and records and merchandise. Mm. So um, I think the key thing is, if you can, is befriend a really good promoter, sort of work out a promoter agency that you'd like to use. So you can use either a local one, but I would suggest national because obviously then you'll get out and performing around the UK and potentially Europe as well. So there's um, SJM and Live Nation, or you could try, depending on sort of type of genre, there's a couple of other promoters that you can use, like This Feeling or Sucker are really good. Um, and it's I would say that is a great way of getting your band or artist out there and showcasing them. And then if you haven't got money for um, plugging with a radio plugger, either for regional or national, and for a press agency, it's a case of, sort of working between the two of you, the manager and your artist, to work out a good bio and then a press release, and and then you'll have to work out who share the job really, who's going to contact who, and yeah. really get your name out there, and you know make make sure you follow up on emails as well, just to see if anyone's listened to the music or if they'd like to come to one of the shows, and invite as many people down, like almost have a showcase as well. A really good idea of getting everyone down within the industry. Just kind of like building those relationships and then also maintaining them then sounds really important. Um, Lou, sorry, Lou, well, Lou, Eric, <laughs> what about you? What would you say to that? Um, well, yeah, I think Lou made some really great points there. Um, I think definitely, yeah, it's about kind of, as you say, getting out there, um, just, just getting your kind of band out there in front of as many people as possible, but also as well, just kind of making sure the, your, your, the practice at the beginning is kind of on point so um just just making sure that you know if you guys are releasing music it's being registered properly so you know just coordinating all of the logistics of the events so you know if your app does end up getting booked somewhere making sure it's all coordinated properly um if they're releasing music making sure the songs are set up properly on prs and ppl so any income kind of comes straight back to the managers um and building on the team as well so in terms of the promoter i think once they've got a bit more experience and they are seeing income um coming in maybe speaking to lawyers and accountants if you know you are planning to get deals building that team if you are doing live shows potentially even speaking to an insurance broker so you know you're covered um, for public liability if someone's crowd surfing and someone gets injured you know just making sure that that you're covered in terms of that but um yeah I'd really say at the beginning stages it's just just really just getting yourself out there and um just helping to, to to put together that plan that strategy working on different social media platforms scheduling posts um there's no kind of one sh um, size fits all kind of thing it's really different on d dependent on the type of act and the type of genre and the type of market that you're working in as well but um yeah all in all I'll just say kind of just getting stuck in and helping out as much as you can just to um make your artists life as easy as possible so they can focus on creating the music yeah definitely I think you can tell um I can tell sometimes when because I promote as well I, I um, promote for a venue in Cardiff um and I'm kind of scoping out smaller bands all the time and you can tell um you can set apart the more polished and they may not even have the most listeners um or, or whatever or the number wise but the more polished tend to come across better get better opportunities from a from a business perspective I think when things are kind of a bit more refined um it's really interesting met, um talking about PRS and PPL as well and some people watching in Wales hello as well by the way if you're still listening um John Morris from PRS is a really helpful person um so if anyone he's always really really um forthcoming with people who want advice and stuff with PPR, PP, PRS and PPL. Um, so yeah, definitely get in contact with John if you need to. Um, Simon, you manage, do you want to talk a bit about your sort of grassroots management strategy? Yeah, yeah. totally. Um, I think it, yeah, it kind of touches on what, what these guys have both said. First off, I think like as a manager, 
and just as somebody working in music, uh, uh, you know, from the ground up and the, the kind of route that I've had to get here, um, I think it's really good practice to try and get yourself um, as much experience across lots of different fields as possible. Um, for me, that's been really handy in the sense of understanding how things work. Um, so like I volunteered for soon in the early days, my stuff, I've done, you know, loads of stuff in Swansea. Um, you know, I did a lot of volunteering and a lot of just turning up and asking to, you know, be an intern and be in meetings and shadow stuff. So now that I'm at a position where I'm asking for things and, and wanting things to work, I understand the kind of mechanics of how a gig works. And if you ask to get booked by a promoter and they only offer you, a hundred quid for your artist or 50 quid you you get why you know if they're not if they're a grassroots promoter putting on a gig in Swansea they're not going to have 500 quid just in their back pocket to give you and your band um and likewise knowing the kind of work inner workings of you know really good production at good venues you can aspire to be like right cool we can we should put on a show that should reach that even if it is in you know a venue that doesn't have the capabilities of somewhere like Tramshed or the Motor Point Arena or anywhere. I know it's the Cardiff International Arena now, isn't it? Yeah, wicked. Um, and then, yeah, the other thing I think uh, is yeah, getting out there and just getting to as many networking things. I mean, people that are already here tuning into this, that's already a big step in, you know, getting into the right spaces. Um, I think Focus Wales, if you're in Wales, get to Focus Wales because it's in Wales, but also brings in people from the industry from all over the world um, and just meet people and talk to people. And I think if you're managing a band and they're, even if they're not playing festivals like Focus Wales or anywhere that's got like a conference networking element of it, so like the Great Escape, um, I know Soon do some stuff, Swansea Fringe do some stuff, but get your artists to go to these networking things as well. Um, I find that anybody, you know, meetings that I've had with other festivals or agents or anything like that, if they can get a flavour of who and what the artists are away from their live show, that's really handy especially well especially if they're good in a situation like that as well um but uh, and kind of aside from the managers thing as well like if you're an artist get yourself into these spaces as well because that's where you could meet a manager or meet someone that knows a manager that might be able to be like oh i met this really cool artist you should go and check them out and blah blah, blah. so um yeah i think for me 99 percent of things i've gone to and spaces i've been in with people in and outside of Wales from like the grassroots level up are lovely and are willing to give you their time to help you get to that next step. Really. Um, I think there's for people I know and meet there's, you know, they just want everybody to thrive and do well and not just in Wales and outside of Wales. So that's, that's been a really lovely thing about working in Wales and why, you know, for me as well, I, my plan was maybe only to work in music in Wales for like a year maybe two years and then do the whole, Oh yeah, I'm going to go to London now. That's what everyone does. But I loved it. I think it's, um, I think it's a really exciting place to live and work. And especially now with the age of zooms, you can connect with anyone anywhere in the world without having to pay extortionate rent in London. No offense, Eric. <laughs> no, that's um, similarly. I also had a plan. I think, no, I think, at the time when I left university, I thought that that was the natural step. I thought that's what everyone did. Everyone had to leave to go to London. And that's why. And I, I also planned just to be in Wales working in music for a little bit. And here I am. This segues me nicely. Thank you, Simon, into my next question. So, um, Lou, I'm going to ask you, because I know you're back and forth London um, with artists. How would you say some, how would you grow an audience outside of Wales? What are your tips for that? Um, yeah. I mean, it, it goes back to what I was originally saying about the promoter. If you can you can find a good promoter and, you know, do some showcases, find key cities. The other really good way is, is linking in with universities. So, you know, doing Freshers Week or any uni shows. Um, and then obviously tapping into student radio as well for interviews is great. Um, but yeah that's a that, I, I'd strongly recommend that 
definitely to go that way. Yeah, that's a really, I've never considered that actually. Like obviously students are at a prime time where they're like looking for the next cool sort of music to listen to. Exactly, yeah. And they have time and they have a little bit of income. And, you know, especially within sort of universities and they do uni shows, they, they don't cost much to get in. And it's a really good way of finding out, you know, the music scene, what's going on. So, I, yeah, it's a really good way of getting in there. Yeah, for sure. I know um, I was on a panel in Conwy last week um, and I was um, into, uh, no, I wasn't, I was an interviewee, sorry. I never know the difference now. But I was with on a panel with Claudia um, from High Grade Grooves, um, who manages NDAB. Um, and she was basically talking about, because um, they're in electronic music in Wales and there's a lot of, um, I suppose with electronic and dance music and stuff like that, there's a lot more of a market for students. Um, but it's interesting how you bring um, just the student community into it. I think that's really interesting. Um, Eric, what would you say, um, how do you suggest someone grows an audience outside of Wales, aside from what Lou's mentioned, if there is anything that springs to mind? Yeah, well, I mean, there's yeah, so many different ways. Um, as everyone always says, you know, social media, and that, that's a really good way to kind of um, build a fan base and kind of engage directly with your fans. So, you know, posting lots of content across the different platforms, TikTok, et cetera, targeted posts. Um, depending on the type of act, you've got many different platforms as well. So there's things like BBC Introducing, um, which have um, specialists in different kind of regions that you can, you know, reach out to submit your music for, which will get your music in front of a much wider audience. And um, similarly to what Lou was saying as well with the live events, I've yeah had a background in, in live events years ago to put on my own events. And one thing that, that we used to do, I'm not sure how it would work now kind of post COVID, but um, you know, as a, if you're working with a collective or you've got a bit of money to put on an event, um, what we would do is we'd kind of book a venue um, reach out to acts who are within the same kind of genre, who have a bit of a following, who are kind of slightly ahead of where our act was, and kind of book them. So, you know, we, we've, we've booked this artist who's already got a following, they're in the same kind of vein as us, um, you've put your act on the same lineup as them, and it already kind of makes you look a bit like, okay, you're in that same kind of... Um, in, in that same kind of world as as these other artists where you can kind of tap into their fan base so that potentially could could be another way of doing it um quite risky but if you do have the funds um potentially that that's a really good idea it's a really good idea god we're getting gold in this panel today aren't we lucky things that's such a good idea i was you've inspired me eric you've inspired me <laughs> You One thing I would say, just going back on what Eric said, is um, with social media, it's free advertising, you know, and everyone seems to forget, they're like, oh, God, I hate social media, I hate doing Instagram, I hate doing TikTok. But years and years ago, you had to pay for a little square in NME to advertise a show or, you know, a release. And that's just such an amazing, because you can tap in and you can tag in other bands and bring their followers across and, and shout about your music and what you're doing and it, it's so important to use that because it is free and, and getting your head around it in whichever way you can with not studying what other management companies are doing or what other um, artists are doing it's it's really it's a really important tool to use at the moment. Social media is a funny one I think I, I, I'm a, I agree with you on the fact that it's free and stuff but I feel like it can be done so badly and it can be done so well and there's such a it's so hard to navigate like for example the band I manage aren't necessarily into the idea of social media at all so it's trying to like feed um ideas like tasteful ideas to them that I know probably would work um but it's to how they want to present themselves I suppose every artist is different what what sort of um I suppose what I'm trying to ask is like how do you use social media to the best of your ability, really, without over shouting about things becoming like I find it sometimes when there's the same um, hacks or whatever that I follow and they're constantly, constantly overdoing it. It kind of turns you off a bit. Um, so I think there's a real there's a knack to finding that happy medium that I don't know if I've really worked out yet. Um, does anyone have any sort of advice? Lou, do you have any sort of? Yeah, I do. I think. 
at the end of the day, it is a job, so everyone needs to to work at it and put a plan together in order to to advertise and and use it to promote your music at the end of the day. So we all hate doing things in work, but we got to do it to get where we want to be. But I think also it's about finding the platform that works best for you and your music. So it might be that you have followers on YouTube, or you might have more followers on um, Instagram. And so it's like, use that as your, if that's where your audience is, you know, you need to keep them engaged. So just use that one platform so you don't get too overwhelmed by social media. Yeah. That's a really good piece of advice. But yeah, it, it is work and it is something that you have to work at. Um, and it's about following trends and 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 it's not used just for advertising and promoting. People need to get to know you as well. So it needs to be quite personable as well, I think. A lot of people just ram it down. You know, it's like I'm doing this show and I've got this tour poster. But it's nice just to find a little bit about the band. Like how do they start off? Have they got any interests, any hobbies? And I think that's a, a great tool for that. Yeah, for sure. Um, Eric, do you have any comments on that at all? Um, yeah, just similarly to what Lou was saying, I think it's all about kind of just planning and scheduling. So, I mean, if you know if you've got a kind of release coming up um, or you've got a set of releases planned, um, not always, but a kind of standard template people use is kind of the six week kind of build up to a release. So, you know, ideally, if you've got your track in with the kind of distributor, you've got six weeks up until then kind of scheduling posts um so you know okay on this day i'm gonna do you know four weeks before it we could be like you know post a little teaser four weeks to go um that kind of thing and yeah um repurposing content as well so i mean once you've actually released the music and it's already already out um i think kind of post release that strategy as well kind of just reminding people that the music is out there um Things like TikTok as well, you know, like there's lots of different trends. If you're managing an act that's into, you know, the different kind of um, trends, they can maybe utilize that as well and um, dance into one of their own songs to build up a bit of traction. Um, but yeah, that, that's that's pretty much it. Um, there's there's loads of others, but but not not much that comes to mind right now. No, that's great. Thank you so much, um, Simon. Yeah. How how do I keep an artist motivated and on track? Well, that's a good question. Um, I mean, first and foremost, communication is key. Um, checking in regularly. Um, working as hard as they should be working. Like Lou said, it's like setting a good example as a manager. We'll set a good example for them. Um, yeah. I was just thinking I was just my mind was in social media so I'll just jump back to that for a sec as well in the sense of um keeping content looking really good is key I guess that kind of motivates people as well um but by having like on the face of it I always say to people your, your social media is your shop front right so it's like if people don't know who you are that's like that first snapshot of an Instagram or a Twitter or a Facebook the first thing they see the profile picture header and the first post that's what then you're going to be judged immediately in like a millisecond so making sure that all of that content is looking good and relevant to you um there's so many bands and artists that I see and I kind of like have a little scroll through and it's just like gig posters with like a hundred bands on there and they're like you have to scroll down to actually see a press image of the band and be like oh cool so this is who they are and what they're like um I was actually going to say Himalayas are so, so excellent at social media and posting stuff. I always thought like even years ago, um, I did a, I put a few gigs on with them and they would like come with a photographer. They would take amazing pictures. They'd be posted the morning after looking really good, edited. And it's just like people know from a very quick turnaround, like, OK, this is a band that this isn't a hobby band. This isn't a band that just like turn up the guitars playing and be like oh yeah we're in a band but this is like I know that we want to we want to do this and we, we're doing it properly um and making sure that extends to release campaigns and anything any sort of news but yeah I completely agree in the sense of um trying to get personalities across as well um Al I know I've spoken to you about it as well and and you know the artists that want to maintain an air of mystery about them or don't want to give too much away on who they are there's definitely like creative ways that you can get around that you don't have to 
jump on a live and be like hey guys i'm going to do a q a with all you guys and you know you can you can do it subtly and one one really lovely way that i you know suggest artists do is like just like make a playlist of like your favorite tunes and put that out like once a month um i think i get to know artists a lot by the music that they like and share um kind of gives you an impression of who their influences are and who they're liking and you know throwing curveballs in like if they, if you're making grime but sharing mariah carey in a playlist it's like okay cool and that's pretty cool um you know it's just giving people a little flavor to show that you're professional doing it right but also you're human and have like a you know a nice different side to you um but yeah going back to the motivated thing um yeah i think that i think just like reassurance there's a lot you know i think most of the, the artists you know that i've worked with or speak to are like don't think things are going well or you know not waking up to a major record label deal or a label deal or an agency in the morning and being like oh we failed it's like making sure that the small wins stack up as well um because small wins are wins anyway and i always say like look if we're doing stuff and it's getting more than one person to listen to music it's not a failed mission um so yeah, it's it's a tricky one though, and it's hard, especially at a grassroots level where you don't just like when you're not sitting on piles of cash and everything in terms of like making and releasing music is very hand to mouth. But um I think like as soon as you get a, a manager or like just people around you, I think having a team or just like a bunch of people around you that you know you can trust and are invested in the band as much as you. Um does a lot for artists but also does a lot for perception on that artist as well um like as soon as some artists that we've worked with or that i've worked with in the past that have either got a manager or signed to an agency or a team as soon as you can put that on like an application immediately promoters and festivals are like oh okay cool they're like i said they're taking this seriously um and i always say to people as well like if you don't have a manager you could just like have a manager email, you know what I mean? Like give the impression that you've got one, a lot of things in, you know, a smoke and mirrors in that sense. And I think just making sure that you've got trusted people around you that, you know, you identify as an artist or a manager um, as people that you can know and trust and help on stuff is invaluable and helps with motivation. Sorry, that was really long. I, I, I'll stop talking now. No, that was juicy. Thank you, Simon. That was a lot of info. Thank you. Uh, one second, just going back to my questions. Oh, yeah. What would you say, Lou and Eric? What's the best way to keep an artist motivated and maybe even keep yourself motivated as a manager? I feel sometimes it's, no offence to my lovely artist, but sometimes it can, very, very rarely, it can feel like you're shouting into the void a bit when you, there's like, if you're just the sole manager of something, and the band is working on the creative side of things. There isn't really, unless like I'm quite lucky with the fact that I speak to Simon and I, and bounce ideas off him. But if you are in sort of like a solo position with it, how do you stay motivated and you know on track with things yourself? Do you think it's it's all about the sort of communication with your artist, and that's most important? Um, just to touch on it quickly, I think Simon made a really good point, and you did just now as well, just about kind of communication that's really important and just in terms of management the music industry and life in general it's all about kind of good relationships um, and maintaining good relationships so in terms of motivating artists and yourself um, it's kind of a business partnership between artists and manager so it's things like trust um, organization um, kind of being accountable and transparent on both sides as well um, so you both kind of know what to expect from each other um, but yeah just being honest um, loyalty as well is a key kind of thing um, on, between management and artists and also just having aligned goals so you know as a manager you need to kind of know what your artist wants to achieve um they know what to expect from you in terms of your um boundaries and and that makes a good relationship um yeah that, that that's the main main things which I, what I would say yeah that's really really good lou what were you gonna say 
I mean, it's a similar thing for me. If an artist is looking for a manager, then obviously um, serious about what they want to do for a career. And this is sort of the next step, step up the ladder for them. And I think um, for us, obviously, like you're saying, communication is key. But the way we keep everybody motivated is on sort of, there's lots of different ways, different levels. But with all our artists, we're obviously really good friends with as well. And we have WhatsApp groups and we talk every day in the morning. And I always start my conversations off with checking how everyone is. And we have goals that we have to achieve either throughout the day or throughout the week or throughout the month or throughout the year or our five year plan. So we always try and sort of revert back to our goals and what needs to be done today, what needs to be done this week. And that sort of starts off your communication and it keeps everyone motivated. It gives everyone a job. A job. And when you sort of tick your goal off, it's like you've achieved something, you know. And another thing that we always do is we sort of save any good news <laughs> and you know feed out the bad news and then pad out the good news at the end of the, you know, end of the conversation but that's that's a really good but having goals and, and achieving those goals as a team and making sure that everyone communicates is is really key but yeah it is at the end of the day it is a job but it is a lifestyle so having that sort of relationship with your artist where you are friend good friends as well does help you know there is that sort of level that we all work together but at the end of the day it is it is it is life so you you know you do have that friendship as well and just checking in with each other because everyone has bad days as well and, and people need to understand that as a manager you're here to listen and vice versa I think sometimes so definitely yeah. on the friendship note um I was gonna ask a question about um what is the importance of making a contract or formal agreement when it comes to managing your friends I mentioned before a lot of people I know in Wales they land into it by managing their friends so what is the importance of that formal agreement do you think and what should that really cover um Lou um I if you're looking after a, a grassroots artist um I think you just need to make sure that you, like we said at the very beginning of this chat, is you need to set the boundaries mm. and put that in, in writing as well so that everyone understands what they need to do to make this work. With all artists, we do actually have contract management contracts um, and we use our lawyer and make sure that the artists obviously have a separate lawyer because you can't use the same lawyer. Um, but yeah, definitely get some kind of head of agreement. And there are templates that you can use. So you don't need to contact a lawyer. Lawyers are very expensive. You know, it can cost up to five to seven hundred pounds, if not more, for a management contract. But nobody can afford when they're starting out. So, yeah, just getting some basic, um, something basic down in writing so that everyone understands what they need to do is, is a good rule of thumb. Amazing. Oh, I just saw the, the chat. Um which, sorry, I didn't see those questions beforehand. Um, let me just check my um, my final one that I'm gonna ask and then I'll open the floor up with my mind. Um, how can I su financially support myself in the role of a manager? Um, Eric, do you wanna take this one? Yeah, yeah of course. Um, yeah, there's lots of different ways you can go around it. I mean, most people start off as, as managers as their kind of side hustle. Um, so, I mean, you know, you can be working and doing it on the side or have a part time job or something like that. But then also there's lots of different opportunities um, for funding and support. So, I mean, the acts you're managing, you have organisations like Help Musicians, PRS Foundation, um, Arts Council England, who have lots of funds to help developing acts. So um, as well as your kind of income that you're making off your, off your job, you can also apply for funds to help your artists in terms of, you know, if they're doing tours or, you know, they just need a bit of support with their release. So I'd definitely say look into, fun, um, sorry, into grants and funding. Um, there's also a fund for uh, managers called the Accelerator Fund, which we um, do at the MMF. It's a bit for more experienced managers with over two years experience. Um, but that's also a, a, another avenue just for the managers um, to kind of support their work that they're doing with artists and, you know, helping your income increase. Um, you've got things like um, Bandcamp. 
um, you know, crowdfunding as well. So if you do have a bit of a of a following, you could potentially put your music on crowdfunding pages. But I think at a grassroots level, lots of it is quite DIY. So it's really about just trying to cut costs where possible and just being really savvy to, um, like Simon was mentioned earlier, kind of get out that content on such a really good level where it's well polished but just trying to reduce costs whether that's you know you filming it by yourself or um utilizing different tools like online kind of tools to edit footage and content or you know calling in favors with friends and things like that just to keep costs low at the beginning definitely thank you so much did you want to add anything simon or lou and then i'm gonna answer the questions in the chat so if anyone has any questions please pop them in um yeah i was just gonna say it is the hardest thing though if you're starting out with a, a new artist and developing them there, there is no money there as a manager because you've got to set the foundations to build and sort of you know make turn it around as a business and make money but i think if you can get um any paid work you know freelance working on festivals or work, or going and working at a label and this is your sort of sideline you're still within the music industry and networking and making contacts and I think that's the best thing to do don't put all your eggs in one basket and just think I'm just going to manage this this artist I think you need to sort of think outside the box and just think about how you can create uh, contacts and network within the industry I think that's that's the only thing you can do because there isn't enough funding and if you could spend all day managing your artist you would but you can't afford to do it yourself you've got to support yourself in order to then then get your artist where they need to be yeah I'd agree it's yeah definitely from, a, from an early stage think of it as a side hustle thing um and yeah obviously if you want to work in music you know plan a go for paid work within the music sector um that's also really tricky um you know it's so competitive um at the moment especially it's great you know it's so good that so many people want to work in music but obviously there's not hundreds and hundreds of jobs going around um you know i always say like and say to people think you know as a manager you've almost got to think of yourself as but like go back to what i said at the beginning you're in the band you wouldn't expect all your band members to be like right i'm just gonna play guitar all day and wait for the gigs to come rolling in and all the fans you know that's not a sustainable way of doing it you know i know bands that have been on world tours and european tours that come home and they're working jobs in between that um so yeah start small um and yeah try and get as much experience and it can you know for me it was like i was in a job you know pretty well paid after uni doing music courses and workshops around the uk and then my mate was like do you want to run a festival with me and i had no intention of doing that and it's now snowballed into me to where i am now um just by being that person that was like yeah i'll do that why not that sounds fun uh and it you know the amount of people i've met and know and experiences i've had in a very short time have been i've been really lucky to have that so um yeah i think be brave and be brave and show people that you're passionate and friendly. I think friendly is like the key thing for me as well. Um, because then people know, if people know you're hardworking and easy to work with, what more can you want? You know, if you're good at what you do, you're hardworking and you're nice. There's not much else that, you know, no other reason why people can't go, oh yeah, let's, let's not ask them. So that, that's what I'll end with. A lovely note to end our our chat on thank you so much to Eric Lou and Simon um it's been really enlightening I could do this all day maybe we should do a round two and get more into the details of it but um thank you for everything you've answered so far a uh, question from Charlie Nichols as an artist how do I find a manager slash the right manager for me um Eric do you want to answer this one for me yeah, so um, I'd say a good first place to start is, um, so if you go onto the MMF website, um, the mmf.net, they've actually got a tab on there called Artist Seeking Management. Um, so if you go on there, you can kind of upload a link to your music, um, put a bit of a bio in there, and that kind of gets your music in front of, you know, all of the over 1300 managers within the MMF community. Good place to start. Um, but also as well, it's just, 
I feel like a lot of, of times with artists, I feel that you need to kind of be in the right position and in the right space to ask um, for a manager. And just through speaking with managers, what I found is that a lot of the times when people are kind of looking for managers, um, a lot of the times they're not really in the right kind of place where they should be. I mean, if you're doing everything right, you're going to the gigs, your music's out there, you're posting on socials, in an ideal world, um, managers should be kind of coming after you. Um, but until that point, I'd say similarly to Simon's point earlier, it's about networking, you know, getting out to as many kind of events, industry events, networking events. Um, you know, if you're an artist, they have associations like the Featured Artist Coalition. If you're a manager, they've got places like the MMF, join up with these different societies, attend their events, engage with the communities and just put yourselves in the right spaces where you know potential music industry people are um yeah that that that's a good 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 way to get management um also through you know if, if you are someone who's signing contracts or being offered a deal which is a bit further than grassroots lawyers accountants they're also good contacts who can put you in contact with managers as well thank you so much eric that was so detailed um with james now james jones if it's the James Jones I'm thinking of, you play a mean violin, James. Um, how do managers like to be contacted by artists? Is there a good way to approach them? Lou, do you want to take this one? That's a tricky one. Um, I think the best way is via email because we're all, well, I am always really busy. So I tend not to pick up my phone all the time just because I have so much going on. Um, but yeah, I think an email, but bearing in mind, obviously, you know, a lot of management, managers and management get lots of emails every day from artists looking for someone to represent them. Um, and I think it's about being personable and friendly, like Simon said, um, you know, a nice, short, cohesive email, invite to a show, because no one ever asked me that. Would you like to come to a show? And I'll put you on the mm -hmm. guest list. I think if someone said that, I would probably go if I had the night off, rather than going, I need a manager, because the biggest question is, well, why do you need a manager you know so I think it's sort of those yeah that's what I would say <laughs> an email yeah I'd agree like put on a guest list to a show like that's the one place you want to get a manager to see you and see you live um but yeah going back to the email thing as well it's like yeah make it short make it sweet make it personal but also like what I say to people is always do a follow-up email like there's so many times where I wake up on a Monday and I've got like hundred emails and I'm like, I need to answer this one now. I need to answer this one now. Then all of a sudden it's like half 10. I've got through a hundred answered the ones that are really important, made a cup of tea. And then by the end of the day, I've forgotten about it. And that's not, to, that's no way, you know, I'm not being like, no, I, I'm not interested. I'm just going to ignore them. It's just because I'm busy. Um, so I, and it's, and it's the same for my work that I do outside of management when I'm, you know, doing stuff for, for the various other music -y things I do. I, I have a three email rule. I, I send one, I send another one, and then I'll send a third one, maybe like a week or two later in between, like just double checking you've seen my email. And if they haven't re responded to the third one, I'm like, okay, they're either not interested or just far too busy that it's not going to work. Um, and it works with me. If I have an email, being like just checking you got this email I that will then bump it to be like on my priority list to be like oh my god I saw that email and I ignored it I'm going to write back right now even if it's a yes or a no but it's like don't be and that I think that extends to everything it goes to funding it goes to gig opportunities anything you apply for or ask for if you either don't hear back or don't get it that doesn't mean that you've failed and aren't worthy of that opportunity it just means it hasn't worked out at that specific time so always try again and follow up and don't be pushy but just be like if you haven't heard anything you can just be like oh just checking because yeah nine times out of ten it's because we're busy <laughs> And, you know, if I can't do something, I'll say in an email back, sorry, I'm too busy, I can't manage you, but I'd love to stay in touch. Let me know when you've got a gig coming up sort of thing. So it's a good way to make contacts. I think that was a lovely place to leave it today. I would love to speak to you all and stay in touch again. Um, if anyone has a question that they didn't get a chance to ask or get answered, um, 
my email is alexandra at um and i'm sure the rest of my panelists here would be happy to be contacted um or just ask through me and i can try and get some answers for you um but thank you so much to everyone who's attended and to my panelists um yeah i could do this again i could do this for hours it was so so helpful to me as well so i hope it's helped um other people in this little internet room that we have set up today um yeah thank you all so much is there any final passing words anyone wants to say before we cut the the put me on some of your guest lists if you're an artist i want to come to more shows <laughs> simon wants some free shows basically to help simon out yeah exactly i'm just like fishing for some free tickets for gigs but no i'd love to i'd love to see as many people as possible if you're an artist or a manager that wants to connect as well let me know definitely and um the mmf is a really really good resource so please check that out um yeah eric i don't know if you want to quickly say anything about that yeah, I just wanted to say, yeah, please do. Um, if you have any questions or queries, I'll quickly put my email in the chat if you want to get in touch. Um, but I just want to say thank you so much, Alex, as well, for hosting such a great panel. And yeah, thanks as well. It's great um, being on a panel of you both, um, Simon and Luke.